Margaret. We are absolutely live right now, so <sighs> let's take a breath, everyone. Everyone has their masks on, it's so beautiful. You're still beautiful, radiating beings of light. And we're going to continue with our talk. This is part two of aligning with the divine. There, <laughs> there is a really great chorus to the song, The Great Unknown, that I like to read to you short. I'm stepping into the great unknown. My only road is the path I roam. Embrace a world I've never known, and I feel free. And that really applies to not only today at the service, but in this this world we're living in, where we are living in the unknown, the great unknown. And I don't know about you, but Joyful Gathering Spiritual Center is embracing it and moving forward. We're taking every moment that looks like a challenge and turning it into stepping stones to arrive at our good, which is always waiting for us. And it, this, this little poem, this little song I just read, it fits beautifully with our theme, which is based on the idea that before we step into that great unknown, before we embrace a world that we have never known, before we set out to make our mark, before we set out to bring our dreams into fruition or to solve our challenges, before we do any of that, it would behoove us to turn inward. Once we turn inward, we can only go in one direction, and that is upward. So before heading out, we ought to head in. Head in first and up, so that we anchor ourselves, anchor ourselves in source first. Source is another name for God. And in the divine wisdom, freedom, love, joy, peace, abundance of source that lives within us, we turn to that, we align with that, we embrace that divinity within us. Ernest Holmes in Science of Mind wrote this in a very clear and wise way that he has. The control of affairs is from within out not from without in. That's something for us to remember. So we are taking the time to go in and up. And the source of our being, connecting with it before we move out into action, to connect with that indwelling light. Today is part two of Move Up, which we began last week. We called it the seven ups. And so we did, we looked at three and a half of the seven ups last week. And I'll tell you what they are and then I'll let you know what the, the other three and a half are. First was look up to God, the source of all good. Lift up the vibration of our emotions by choosing a different thought. Lighten up, realizing that we can hold things lightly and find the joy of God and make it up. That's my favorite. We get to decide. We write our story. And we did half of that last week, so we're going to do the other half this week. So we continue with that. We look more at making it up. Then we go to kick it up, give it up, and start it up. So first, make it up part two. So as I said last week, we could take a clue from the prosperity teacher, Edwin Gaines, whose, whose friend I talked about last week put the um, initials MSU after her name. And Edwin was very impressed by that, and, but she couldn't figure out what it meant. So she asked her friend, and she said, make stuff up. <laughs> We can put a, why can't we have cards made with anything we want on them? We can do whatever we want, right? You get to make up the meaning of your life to you. And who remembers this scene from The Secret? Remember the movie, The Secret? 
or the section in the book in which Neil Donald Walsh says, there is no blackboard in the sky on which God has written your purpose, your mission in life. He said this, this is what he wrote. There is no blackboard that says Neil, Don Neil Donald Walsh, handsome guy who lived in the first part of the 21st century. <laughs> and all I have to do to really understand what I'm doing here, why I'm here, is to find that blackboard and find out what God really has in mind for me. But the blackboard doesn't exist. So your purpose is what you say it is. That's your purpose. Your mission in life is the mission that you give yourself. That's your mission. You really get to fill in that blackboard and, and make life what it really should mean to, and, and could mean to you whenever you want. And Walsh says this, if you have feel, filled it in with baggage from the past, wipe it clean. Erase everything from the past that does not serve and be grateful it brought you to this place now and to a new beginning. You have a clean slate, he says, and you can start over right here, right now. Find your joy and live it. So you get to make, this is so important for us, no one tells us this, you get to make your life up going forward. And you can also make up a new story about your past. It's called reframing. If you, anyone's taken radical forgiveness, we reframe the old story and we write a new one. Write a new story. Don't stay, because the whole point of that is not to stay in victim consciousness. There are, there's no victims here. We are empowered people when we step into that power. Because here's the deal. If we step out into life, into the great unknown, with an ingrained limiting belief, that will outpicture that limiting belief in our lives. And we do not want to outpicture limiting beliefs, which means we make more and create, because we're creative beings. The divine deals in ideas and creativity. It's always creating. So we want to create a life that we want to live. We don't want to create a life that's filled with limiting beliefs. Let's say, for example, you were raised in an atmosphere of struggle. You watched your parents struggle to make ends meet. And you heard things like, money doesn't grow on trees. It's a dog-eat-dog -dog world. I never really got that, but yeah. The pie is only so big, so you have to struggle to get your slice of it. You've got to work your fingers to the bone. I don't like that one. And they're awful sayings. These are truly awful sayings, but it's what most people grew up hearing. And then it goes into our subconscious, and we repeat it in our lives, and we're here. The whole point of these spiritual truths is to empower us, to make our story up, to be in freedom. And so if we grow up with that idea of lack and limitation, we can change it. But now here at this center, you are being told each week that you are a divine expression of life and life is yearning to express through you as your hopes and dreams in an abundant and prosperous way. That you deserve those dreams and that they can be yours. We say that every week. You say yes to that and then you step out and create. You don't forget it. You take it with you into your lives. And we end that whole idea of struggle in our lives. We just embrace everything that unfolds. And we can turn our problems into solutions because we talked about that God comes in with the solution, or the, the, these, these conditions come in with the solution attached to the problem. We just have to be clear enough 
and direct enough and confident enough to find and be in the solution. And here's the new story for all of us, if you want. And feel free to make it to make it yours if this scenario fits you. You were destined to live your dream to the fullest. You were destined to shine God's light as you in amazing ways. So you went through that life curriculum of struggle so you could see firsthand how detrimental that attitude which really permeates our country is. And to move into living life fully, to its absolute fullest, the way, that way whenever you see it in your world, whenever you see something that just doesn't feel right, it's giving you a clue. It's letting you know that you are walking down the wrong road. So you immediately pivot. You immediately pivot. And I tell you, I've learned the greatest lessons in my life from what I did not want. So whenever I now encounter what I do not want, I know to pivot. And I pivot with affirmations. I'll say a great affirmation, like the highest good has always taken place in my life. The universe is here to support me in all ways, no matter what the condition looks like. It's amazing how that works, and it does work. It absolutely does. You must try it for yourself, but it does work. And then we move to kick it up. And um, what does that mean, to kick it up? It means to tap into your innate enthusiasm and passion. A passion for life. An enthusiasm just to live. I am so enthusiastic about these spiritual teachings that they're always fresh in my mind, in my life, and in my very being. They are what I've replaced those old limiting beliefs with. Life is going to happen anyway. We get to choose how we want to respond to it. And then you can kick it up. And that means that innate enthusiasm. Holmes said this in The Power of an Idea. Enthusiasm is a complete assurance and confidence that there is a power within us greater than we are and that we may use it. It should be our purpose to awaken to this joy in us again and again and enter into the game of living, not sitting on the sidelines as though we were isolated, but on the field ourselves. It is God's enthusiasm, and it becomes ours on acceptance. So the question this morning is then, do you have the enthusiasm about living your best life? Given any circumstance, this is the best that I can do, and living the best life. That's a question. Are you zealously embracing the fullness of this gift of life that you have been blessed with? Are you passionate about the idea of coming from your spiritual center? If not, it's time to kick it up. And I absolutely love what George Bernard Shaw said about life. I love this. Listen to this. This is the true joy in life the being used for a purpose recognized by yourself as the mighty one, being a force of nature instead of a feverish, selfish little clod of ailments and grievances, complaining that the world will not devote itself to making you happy. Mm -hmm. I want to be thoroughly used up when I die. For the harder I work, the more I live. I rejoice in life for its own sake. Life is no brief candle for me. It is a sort of splendid torch, which I got to hold for the moment. And I want to make it burn as brightly as possible before handing it to future generations. I love that. Use up this life. 
use it. Use it to its fullest that you can in any particular moment. When enthusiasm and skill work together, the end result is often a masterpiece. Your life, make it a masterpiece. So find what makes you come alive, whatever it is, become it. And let it become you. And great things will happen for you and to you because of you. So kick it up, my friends. Ernest Holmes defines grace in the science of mind as the givingness of life to its creation. He defines love as the self-givingness of the spirit through the desire of life to express itself in terms of creation. The self-givingness of spirit through the desire of life to express itself in creation. That's what we get to do. If we truly, truly desire to express God at the highest level, then we must begin from the inside out and be givers to life. Remember, giving and receiving are one and the same. We must give to receive. It's the law of circulation. In Buddhism, it is said there are three kinds of givers. Beggarly givers, number one, and they give only after much hesitation. And then just the leftovers, the worst of what they have. The underlying belief there is that there is not enough and what I have must be hoarded. And then there's the second, the friendly givers. They give what they themselves would use. They share what they have and with less deliberation and more offhandedness. The underlying belief is that there will be more and this is a friendly universe. And then you have the kingly givers, the highest kind of givers. They offer the very best that they have. They share spontaneously and in the moment without needing to deliberate. deliberate. <laughs> Giving has become natural to their conduct. The underlying belief is that life is abundant. The universe provides rich abundance. So, which consciousness do you want to share your gifts from? And our final move, our final, you understand that the giving and the receiving is a state of consciousness. Once we get that in all aspects of our lives, in everything we do, say, and feel, and think. So our final, our final move up is to start it up. Start everything First, by listening to that still, small voice within. What would you have me do today? What would you have me believe in today? And then listen. Listen for a quality. Because one will come through. A trait will come to mind. Peace, love, joy, abundance, any of those spiritual truths. When Francis of Assisi asked those questions, he heard that rather than being in hatred, let me be in love. Where there is injury, let me bring pardon. Where there is doubt, let me bring faith. Despair, let me bring hope. Where there is darkness, let me bring light. And when there is sadness, where there is sadness, let me bring joy. I would suggest that if you were to listen to that still small voice within each and every one of us, that infinite wisdom of God knows the exact energy for you to move forward. Turning inward before we, we go outward, we do it opposite. We look at the conditions and then we try to solve them from the outside. Go within. And if you don't know how, pray. We did that today. When everything looked like it was not all conspiring for our greatest good, we say, uncle, let's go pray. 
and then everything unfolds exactly as it should, exactly as it should. Every day is an opportunity for us to simply choose to pay attention. What is that quiet voice within us saying? What is it saying? Practice listening closely to that voice of small wisdom within you. But for now, we have a chance this morning to commit to going inward and upward before going outward. And here's the seven ups just to refresh us. Looking up to God, the source of all good. Lift up the vibration of our emotions by choosing a different thought. Lighten up, lighten up, really. We can hold things lightly. Make it up, decide what your story is and then live it. And you can do the same with your past, reframe your story, give it up. Express your divine nature by being kingly givers. Kick it up, being enthusiastic and a, bring passion to your life. You don't have to be as loud as I am, but you can bring passion in a quiet way to your life too. And then start it up. Always start anything by first going within for that guidance. You will receive it. And I'm gonna end with a short poem from 13th century Sufi poet Rumi. He wrote this, come, come, whoever you are, Wanderer, worshiper, lover of leaving, it doesn't matter. Ours is not a caravan of despair. Come, even if you have broken your vows a hundred times, a thousand times, come, come again. And so I invite all of us, all of us, to continuously go within, to come again to that divine, loving energy that is waiting to be acknowledged by us. Truly, it is there. Truly, it is there. So we find that out by aligning with that indwelling divinity. And so it is. So it is.